we are all going to be Jacks and Jills who would be climbing the hill. So, before we are set for the expedition, let us get introduced to our internal Hitachi guests. Can we start with Neha? Yeah, hi all. Uh, I am Neha. Neha Varuna. And uh, I am working with Hitachi from the last, past two and a half years. And I am an Informatica retail developer. And uh, today I have joined Toastmaster as a guest. Don't close so that I can have a... Please go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so that like uh, I can just have a look and feel how this club and uh, how does it uh, it will help me in the long run. So on the basis of today's session, I'm gonna decide whether I I'm gonna join it or not. <laughs> okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. set for our second chapter's meeting and this is Manisha Shinde, your SSA, who would be assisting you all to reach the peak by learning from you all and giving something from my side. So let us, let me call upon stage our VP Education, who would be playing the president's role today. And before that, Manisha, why don't you just tell the rules uh, for the meeting? Sorry, I missed on that. We have certain rules. Rule number one, please put all your cell phones on silent mode. Rule number two, whenever you enter the stage, please greet. Whenever you leave, make sure you again greet. That's the handshake protocol and the exit during transition process. Yes, we are almost done. So, may I call up on stage our VP Education, who is playing the role of President. Please welcome Toastmasters Somyajit Dashbajumda. Uh, thank you, Manisha, and uh, welcome all the internal guests and the fellow Toastmasters. So, uh, today we are going to welcome some external guests, but they have not arrived yet. So, let me just go ahead with inviting our Toastmaster of the day. He has been with Hitachi Consulting for the last four years, and he is from the mechanical engineering background, but he, love, he says that he loves coding. So, we are going to welcome the president of Vidaji Consulting Postmasters Club, Sunil Rathod, and with that, I am calling this meeting to order. Please all welcome Postmaster Sunil Rathod. When you reach the peak, and you stand there firm, seeing the world from the zenith, And you see the obstacles that resisted you from reaching that peak. Those will be looking very tiny, small little dots to you when you're on the peak. The tiny dots which you can squash very easily. Mr. President, dear Toastmasters and our esteemed guests, I'm Sunil Rathod and I'll be playing the Toastmaster of the day for this meeting. So let me tell you a story. The story is mine. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a general evaluator uh, coming in. So I welcome Saurav Saxena, Toastmaster Saurav Saxena and uh, Amit, Toastmaster Amit. So please be seated here. And Toastmaster Chandra, though I'm sorry I missed. So uh, before before I begin on the speech, let me introduce uh, let me uh, 
introduce uh, uh, welcome our uh, press, uh, the guest today he'll be playing the general evaluator for this meeting and uh, uh, Saurabh, uh, you uh, you're welcome and uh, so i'm sorry we had to start it so that you know we could manage the things on time so we already started the essay has given the updates and i'll be the toastmaster of the day for the meeting so let me tell you a story guys uh, this is the story of, of mine when i was four I was one of those naughty and stubborn boys who, you know, who if they want someone in, if they want something, if, if you want something, they like start rolling over the floor and listen until he gets it. I'm sure many of you would have done that in your childhood. So I had a great love of chocolates. So one day what happened, my mom, I mean, I, I was just asking for the chocolate for my mom and my mom was like, she was worried about my teeth getting decayed. So she said that, I won't give you the chocolates, do whatever you can. And again, as usual, I started rolling with the floors. So my mom looked out the window. I mean, we are standing near the window and my mom looked out the window and uh, a, a lady wearing burqa was just passing by. So my mom said, if you, if you don't stop asking for chocolates, I will hand you over to a black dressed lady. She'll take you her home, she'll cut you into pieces, and she'll cook, cook a curry out of it and eat it. I was shocked for a while. I mean, this whole concept of kid curry was totally new for me. And uh, I said, I don't believe you, mom, you're lying. She said, look out of the window and you'll get to know. With my courage, I just peeked out of the window and saw the black lady. I suddenly ran behind my mom and said, are you going to hand me over to that lady? She said, yes, of course. I said, I don't want chocolates. <laughs> so, that day passed and one day I was playing in the street and uh, just playing and some boy ran by me and uh, shouting that Mujhe nahi aapke saath, mujhe nahi aapke saath. He was just running with full speed and I just looked back and uh, the same black lady was running with full speed behind the boy. <laughs> on the spot, on the spot. I mean, I was little, I mean, I could not run that, with that speed with which the lady was running towards the boy. And I started shivering on the spot. I started shivering on the spot, shouting and yelling, saying that, I don't want chocolates. I don't want chocolates. <laughs> So luckily the lady just passed by me and she was running, she went behind the boy she was chasing. And looking at the chance, I ran with full speed towards my home and ended up in, in, my lap, in the lap of my father. And I told the whole incident to my father, crying a lot and yelling, saying that the uh, black lady has come to catch the children and she's chasing one of the child outside and she's gonna make the curry out of it. So. My father laughed a lot and says, my dear boy, no human in the world would eat a human. So that was the second perception that I formed about the black dress lady. So the first perception that was poured into me was by the opinion of my mom saying that the black lady eats children. That was the first opinion, which created a perception towards the lady and which made the fear born in my heart for the black lady. I used to fear a lot. Second perception was given, uh, second opinion was given by my father. So my perception towards the black lady got changed, saying that, okay, no human in the world eats another human. So years passed by and I grew up. So this perception was changed. And as the perception changed, the fear for the black lady was completely vanished. So in our lives, similarly, when we tweak our perception towards an object or thing that we fear of, the fear gets vanished, right? Now my, my dear friend Priyanshu would say that khadere ke lecture de reo, aisa nahi hota. So he'll say to me that, you know, I'll throw you a lizard in front of you and I'll see like whether your perception got straight or you get, you get tweaked. I would say, I will allow you to do that, Priyanshu. You throw me a lizard for the first time. Definitely I'll run out of this boardroom, leaving all you, all of you here to manage the lizard. But if you throw it second time, 
throw it third time, fourth time, probably hundred time, I'll be able to manage, I'll be able to catch it and throw it outside. So it, what, what is it that will make the fear vanish? It is the practice. It is the practice. It is a frequent encounter to the situation where fear is there. And by practicing those situations, you come out of your fear. You conquer your fear. And you reach the peak of confidence. So that's why I say, when you reach the peak of confidence, that little fear of black lady, of lizard, will look little, very tiny dot, which can squash very easily. With that, I'll proceed to the next proceedings of the meeting and introduce you to a person whose passion for music and singing can be praised well when he says it belongs to the city of Nawabs, Lucknow. He works as a manager in T-Systems and his area of expertise is quality in process and product. He's associated with the Toastmaster for four years now and serving as the president of T-Systems Toastmasters Club. Ladies and gentlemen, Please put your hands together to welcome the general evaluator of the day, Toastmaster Saurabh Saksen. Thank you very much, uh, Toastmaster Sunil, for those kind words and a good introduction. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, the role of a Toastmaster and the role of a general evaluator in Toastmasters meeting is, I'll just brief about that. So basically, a general evaluator is going to evaluate the entire quality of the meeting. Right from the day one when you start setting the agenda, to the preparation of the room, to the way the seating is being arranged, the way speeches are conducted, everything encompasses uh, another evaluation of general evaluator. General evaluator also has a team of members working for as an evaluation. So I'll briefly introduce uh, uh, the timer of for this meeting, Toastmaster Vikram Singh. So Toastmaster Vikram Singh will be the timer for this uh, meeting. Uh, for the AHA counter report, uh, our Toastmaster Sachin Nayak will be the AHA counter. So your job is the toughest job. You have to listen to each and every speech and count number of A, O, A, U. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the grammarian of the uh, for the for this meeting will be Toastmaster Swamijit Das Majumdar. Hi Swamijit. And uh, the listener, it's a good role actually, the listener for this uh, meeting will be Toastmaster Sunil Rathol. So listener's job is uh, to make sure that everybody in the room listens to the speeches. <laughs> and it's a really interesting job. And with this, uh, I won't take much of your time because we are already running behind time. I'll hand over the controls back to the Toastmaster today. Toastmaster Sunil. Thank you. Thank you. Why worry if you have done the best you can? Worry would make it better. She says. She says that why worry if you do if you have done the best you can, worrying would make it better. She has a belief in what Walt Disney said once. If you believe in a thing, if you believe in a thing, believe it implicitly and unquestionably. The lady who belongs to the education hub of India, Pune. She works as a senior consultant in Oracle COP of Hitachi Consulting and her area of expertise are HRMS, Oracle Application Functional. She loves watching, watch, watching movies, Disney cartoons and Discovery Networks. The lady who has done an excellent job of SAA, the Sergeant at Arms of our club. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, let me introduce you Madam Toastmaster Manisha Shinde. Before, before Manisha starts the speech, I would like to ask the evaluator one, <coughs> evaluator one, uh, Sarv Saxena, to read out the object, uh, objectives of the CC1 manual. So, the objective of uh, the icebreaker speech, uh, Manisha, will be for you is to begin speaking before an audience and to discover speaking skills you already have and skills that need some attention and the time frame for the speech will be 4 to 6 minutes. Okay. Thank you. And Madam Toastmaster Manisha will be delivering her CC1 on title From Toddler to Toastmaster. From Toddler to Toastmaster, Toastmaster Manisha Shinde. 
Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Good afternoon. And Good afternoon. wonderful guests. The topic I've selected is from toddler to Toastmasters. It was late night and the lights were still on in their room. She spoke to her husband. We married early and now this new responsibility. I'm not ready for it. Are you? He replied, of course not. But we live with a joint family and they are expecting this baby. Lights went off. After a few days, this to be or not to be baby arrived. And that baby is no one else but me. That worried couple is my mom and dad. Joint family is my grand, was my grandpa, grandparents and my uncles. As a toddler, I was pampered and protected. This made me like too much talkative at home, expressive, playful at home. But when it came to school, I was reserved. I hardly made friends, except for one, my best friend, Rupali. What I'm going to say next is no offense to any of the men anywhere, but a woman's mind is cleaner than a man's mind because she often changes her mind. Same is the case with me. As a kid, I wanted to be a painter. Then I wanted to be a railway driver because somebody told me that railway drivers are not punished if you roll over the train on people accidentally. Sensing my bad side, my granny started narrating stories from Panchatantra. My mom started telling fairy tales of Snow White and Cinderella. And my uncle, he introduced me to Sherlock Holmes and I wanted to be a detective. I actually started my job by spying who has got what for lunch. Days passed very soon. By the time I was 15, I lost my grandma and my uncle. My grandpa followed them. The joint family fell apart. It was also time for my SSC. I somehow managed to get a first class and pulled up my socks for HSC along with my best friend. We had a determination to become doctors, but I observed my friend was away from the focus. She was in love with a guy, which ended in a bad situation. I accused her of being shame to her family and said everything that could hurt her. Next day, I realized, I should say sorry. I rushed to her house. There was a huge crowd outside and she was gone. That day I realized the importance of seeing calm and listening to our loved ones. Uh, I could not fulfill the dream of being a doctor with financial conditions. But yes, I managed to complete my PG in BSc. Uh, I'm sorry, my graduation in BSc and continued to do my PG as a Master of Computer Applications. For that, I had to actually do freelancing so that I could earn my fees. Uh, it was final year in MCA and there were campus selections going on. I somehow cleared the campus selection, got selected, started earning money, and later ended up with Hitachi. Hitachi is a wonderful place, like family loves and helps you grow. Hitachi does the same and they gave me an opportunity to join those masters. And believe me, the aura and the energy in the those masters is contagious. And I'm really looking forward to reach the peak, the zenith in public speaking and leadership through this forum. To conclude, I would like to say a few lines for, from the Disney world. Cinderella walked in glass. Aurora let a lifetime pass. Ariel walked on land for love and life. 
Snow White barely escaped a knife. Rapunzel had to have a new dream. Tiana kissed a prince and turned green. After all, it's all about the tears and smiles. Because love means facing your biggest fears. That's all from my side. Thank you for listening to me. What a wonderful speech, speech it was. Her love for Disney and all the characters was just coming out of her speech. A very good speech. Congratulations on having your CC1. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would request now you to write the feedback for Manisha in the feedback sheet. So, 30 seconds will be given to you for the for writing the feedback. So, Neet, shall I explain them that they need to yeah, that's okay. I'll explain that thing. Yeah. So this, this would look like this and you need to tear the sheet, feedback sheet, like this. And then whatever speaker 1, 2 is there, whatever all the feedbacks that you have got, you can drop into those boxes that you see at the end for speaker 1 and speaker 2. And best speaker, best single topic, best evaluator, and best role player can be here, and that should be got collected at specific time during the meeting. I don't mean to uh, steal uh, your space, Sunil, but uh, I have written uh, the best role player with a pen, so please make note of that and save that part of the paper as well. Salman Khan in Ham Saad Saad Hai Movie. He belongs to the city of Oranges, Nagpur. And he works as a senior consultant on Microsoft Technologies in Hitachi Kinsatin. He enjoys watching Andaz Apna Apna Movie. And fun fact of his life is that he is a software engineer. So he is also playing the shadow of Vice President Public Relations in our club. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the speaker two for today, Toastmaster Sandeep Peshwani. This is for Sandeep. I request evaluator two, Piyush, to read out the objectives of CC1. Uh, Sandeep, uh, your, you'll be attending your CC1, that will be the icebreaker session. The objective for this uh, speak, speech would be to begin speaking before the audience, to discover speaking skills which you already have and the skills which you need to pay attention on. The time limit for the speech would be four to six minutes. All the best. So the topic, the title of Sandeep's speech today is Power of Word. Power of Word, Sandeep Peshwan. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and the guests. So, my topic for today is words have power or the power of the words. When I was a kid and uh, maybe around 8 to 9 years old, so uh, you know, at, at that age, uh, the students start writing essays, they get essay topics in the school. So, the most general essay topics is my school, my pet or my home. 
as you start growing up, you get new essay topics randomly. So the first such uh, my first such uh, instance of uh, sudden surprise topic was my ambition in life. The first time I saw that topic on the question paper, I was dumb. I didn't wrote anything over there. I got a zero. I went home and I asked mom, mom, what should be my ambition in life? I don't understand it. So my mom explained it that that's what you want to become. My mom is a teacher. Right now she's promoted, she's a vice principal now. So she said like, uh, like look at me like, I studied, I did my graduation and I'm a teacher now. Your father, your father still studied, did his graduation and he went into the business. So that's what you do, you study and you make an aim in your life. Where you want to reach the highest point, the zenith of your life. So I decided like, what should be my highest point or what should where should I go? What should I be? And then I started researching on those things. I started using essay books and uh, I started observing like what are the essay books saying. So I observed that most of the essay books were saying that either that author's ambition in life was to be a doctor or to be an engineer. The engineers being the most common of the lot. So I searched like what is an engineer and I observed that the engineer uh, maybe is a person who is um, who is working on the machines and or he is some, someone who is uh, writing some code and doing some stuff or working on the chemicals. So I researched a lot and uh, then I observed that the most coolest, the most uh, what you call the showstopper of that time to that kid was being software engineer and that's how <laughs> I became a software engineer when I wrote an essay for the first time that I want to become a software engineer I hope not to regret that decision so I started growing up I gained confidence when the guests would come to my home and ask me okay so what is your name okay which school do you study all right what is your ambition in life that was that used to be the third question and I would say confidently and very coolly, yeah, my ambition in life is software engineer. Okay, you see, man. So, the next question which bumped upon me was, okay, so you you are going to become software engineer. What apart school do you do? What are your hobbies? Oh my God, I was again stumbled. I was surprised. What are my hobbies? What does the word hobby means? So. I again started researching. Okay, so what should be the hob what should a hobby be? I went to my school, I started asking my friends, what are your hobbies? So they asked, what, what does the word hobby mean? So I explained them that's what you do in your free time. So this, they said like we play, and someone said that okay, my uh, and like they belong to someone like uh, whose parents were very educated and they taught him from the beginning that you should read books and you should become more educated, you should know the world. So he said, I, I read novels. That lot of the school who read the novels was the topest of the school. Those are the topers of the school. So I thought, like, even my name is on the top 10 list of the class. So why shouldn't my hobby be in novels? And that's how my thoughts started resonating the thoughts of the brilliant minds of the school. And I started reading novels. That's how. My hobby became reading novels. I still cherish that thing till today. Okay, that kid is long gone. Kid started growing up. I went, I completed my school. I did my graduation. Though my interest changed over the time, I did my engineering in electronics instead of doing it in computers to be a software engineer. But I still ended up in the software industry. So I started thinking that. I said something in my childhood and I became there. I said something that I want that I would read novels just because the foolish kids are doing, so I started reading novels. So I thought that I have got a predatory pause. After around six years of experience, I got married. My wife was in Mumbai, so she used to travel a lot. I used to console her. No, 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 you will get transfer, you done. All of a sudden she got the transfer and all my enjoyment. Got over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, my ladies and gentlemen, 